What's happening, everybody? Trey here, joined by my dad, Sean, and today, Reactions to the Classics. It is time for a top 10 list of Carrie Libgren. Yes, sir. And uh, d this is going to be a little bit of a different take on the top 10. Uh, our patron who brought this to us, a longtime supporter of the channel, Scott. Thank you, Scott. Thank, thank you, Scott. For bringing Appreciate this man. Uh, looking forward to, to diving into this uh, this journey, so to speak. It's going to be uh, Carrie Libgren's spiritual odyssey 10 songs written by him documenting his journey into christianity which uh it, it's going to be interesting and uh, scott scott wrote up a, a nice intro he to did. kind of prime prime us all he said carrie's a founding member of the 70s progressive rock band kansas which if you're watching this i bet this is why you're watching this, <laughs> and wrote their most famous and enduring hits carry on wayward son and dust in the wind his songwriting was always layered and complex in spite of the fact he never could and still doesn't read or mm. write music interesting wow his lyrics often conveyed a sense of spiritual searching and sometimes hinted at an answer around the corner. The following songs chronicle that journey both before and after he converted to Christianity mm. in 1979. I have listed them in the order of the journey. So it's not a top 10 best songs. It's a journey list. So early is first mm -hmm. rather than the order they were released. It wasn't long after Carrie's conversion that he left Kansas and formed AD with Kansas bassist Dave Hope and others. Mm. While well, still with Kansas, Livgren recorded his first solo project, Seeds of Change, an album that reflected his new faith in Jesus. The album brings together artists from a variety of bands, people he admired, and with whom he wanted to work. Oh, nice. So uh, the first two songs on this list are going to reflect his thinking before his conversion, with the remaining eight written from his Christian perspective. He also never sang lead on his songs, so we found vocalists who cool. best suited the songs themselves. This guy's brought me a lot of great um, Christian artists. Yes. I mean, we're, we're both Christians yeah, ourselves. Yeah, we should say that off, off the top here. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's been a joy because, you know, kind of in that contemporary Christian music realm, uh, it can get old, I think, yeah, after a little bit. Yeah, it can get a little rough, a little cliche, a yeah. little cheesy, a little too much about the money, but uh, that's enough of my rant. On that. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but you know, Scott's brought me some um, uh, artists that are fantastic yeah. musically, while also being able to get a uh, a good message behind it, man. So uh, I guess that's enough talk here. Uh, we're not going to have the music in due to copyright, but you can check out the Vimeo link in the description. That's going to have the full video. Um, and I and as always, we're going to have the lyrics pulled up. Enough talk, man. I'm ready to get into this list. We're going to start off with one of those two songs that uh, is on this list before he converted to Christianity. Uh, Going With the Wall by Kansas from 1976 and that iconic album, uh, Left Overture. Um, and we actually have reacted to the song before. The only Kansas thing we got up. That's right. Um, but uh, Scott said, I know you've done that, but it bears repeating here because it is so representative of Carrie's searching at this point in his life. I love the song musically, but lyrically it communicates a spiritual hunger he finds insatiable. And I may look at this song differently now, knowing yeah. that perspective on it while I listen to it. No, that was a great write-up, Scott. Definitely. I think we're primed and ready, man. So let's uh, buckle down and get into this list. All right, starting this list off with a bang here with The Wall. Um, and, uh, you know, I think knowing the backstory yes. of the tune really kind of aids in, um, you know, just the, the full, obviously, perspective and understanding that, uh, you know, Carrie's going through at this point in his life. Yeah, I agree. And I think even the instrumentation and the, the little solos in there actually kind of build that that anticipation. Yeah. Now, I don't want to say drama, but, you know, the grandness of it all, mm -hmm. of that I'm just searching. Well, it was interesting, too. We started out with almost like a mini solo, which, yes. you know, was unique. And then, of course, Carrie laid it down uh, midway through the track. Uh, organ work was, uh, and, and keyboards just in general, was uh, prominent as well. Especially in the outro. Yeah, man. So, musically, I'm, I'm with Scott here. I enjoyed it. And uh, lyrically, uh, a lot to unpack as well. Yeah. You know, even noting, essentially, I can't believe the things I see. The path that I I have chosen now has led me to a wall so we get into this concept yeah. of this wall um you know popping up uh, uh, before pink floyd uh, i was gonna say beforehand <laughs> you know it rises now before me a dark and silent barrier between all i am and all they would ever want to be it's just a travesty towering marking mm. off the boundaries my spirit would erase so no, that kind of let well, you know what you're getting into. No, yeah, just uh, had that sense of epicness to it, uh, and I think musically it was kind of aided in that. And you know, we had a, a kind of some spiritual. Yeah, verse two. Go ahead and give us verse two, Trey, because that kind of tells it all. Uh, to pass beyond is what I seek. I fear that I may be too weak, and those are few who have seen it through. To glimpse the other side, the promised land is waiting like a maiden that is soon to be a bride. You know, makes me think of, uh, especially in the New Testament, right. talks a lot 
lot about how the church is like the, the bride, bride of Christ. Um, yeah, exactly. And, uh, you know, obviously the promised land going into your Old Testament yep. stuff. Weaving all that together, just that uh, that sense of, uh, you know, searching there and knowing that where I'm at now uh, isn't where I fully want to be. I want to break through that yeah, wall. Yeah, he just doesn't know how at that point. Um, so yeah, I, I I dug that man. That was a uh, that was big time, and uh, second tune's gonna be uh, off this same record. Yeah, after a left overture in 1976, miracles out of nowhere. You see below, uh, Scott tells us a journey musically. Still in my words, right? <laughs> uh, Liveran's lyrics indicate his willingness to explore the minds of others mm. to find some answers beyond his own intellectual and natural perception. Well, that is the key <laughs> with seeking a higher power. All right, Miracles Out of Nowhere, and uh, we kind of mentioned it a little in the reaction, but Scott was right. What a journey uh, of a tune that was, man. Very much so. You had every kind of instrument you could imagine Ooh. coming in there. and A long musical interlude in there. And you can obviously see the uh, see the spiritual. It's not oh, disguised yeah. here. You know, the Miracles Out of Nowhere, I'd give that away. But uh, on a crystal morning, I could see the dew drops falling down from gleaming heaven. I can hear the voices call... When you coming home now, son? <laughs> mm. The world is not for you. Tell me, what's your point of view? Dang, what that that is a fire way to, to start yeah, the is. Uh, to start the tune, man. And then he kind of just uh, expands on that as the song goes along about you know he, he comes across a, a few different people yep, exactly. uh, in their own type of a you know Mr. Madman uh, most notably in the in the second one he talks to his mother as well um, and you know just kind of a uh, gathers information. And, uh, I, I think at the uh, crux of the song, he knows that uh, he doesn't have all the answers. And I thought it was cool the way the course has progressed. Here I am just waiting for a sign, asking questions, learning all the time. And then, um, you know, towards the end, he says, uh, yeah, the last course, here I am. I'm sure to see a sign. So it was almost like that faith's growing in us. Yes, exactly. All my life, I knew that it was mine. It's always here. It's always there. It's just love and miracles out of nowhere. Um, and I got a shout out to Steve uh, Walsh, man. He was killing the, uh, the organ, and uh, I, I think his voice lends well to uh, you know the, the musicianship. That right. We, we have Robbie Steinhardt actually on lead vocals on this. Oh, one. okay, yeah. That, that, Only I see on that two now. songs on this. Yeah, I, I had to see that too because we are not real uh, adept at Kansas. At Kansas, stuff. no, man. But, but yeah, I thought it worked well. You were exactly right in the in the context of that song and the subject matter. Oh yeah, man, and uh, yeah, a lot of a uh, lot of unique uh, you know musical interludes coming in there as well, man. So. We, we got the two songs now, Dad, before he converted to Christianity. Yeah, way back in 1976. Now we're going to fast forward all the way to 1983 with Tonight off the Timeline album from A.D. Carey tells the story of how in 1979, and before he was a Christian, Kansas was touring with LaRoe. At the time, Livgren was immersed in a very obscure spiritual book called The Urantia Book. Mm. Jeff Pollard was a Christian and invited Livgren to ride on the bus with the band so they could compare spiritual mm -hmm. notes. After hours of conversation and debate with Power, Livgren surrendered to Jesus in his hotel room late into that same night. This song communicates his point of surrender that night. Wow. Ooh, so uh, a powerful tune in store, man. All right, another epic type of track. Definitely had a bit of that, uh, you know, early 80s veneer, I think, to it uh, a little bit, just in that production quality. Yeah, the production and just even the instrumentation, the way it, it hit <laughs> you. You know, and, and the harmonization of some of the the words in the verses, very 80s, but made it very powerful in those oh, senses, yeah. man. Kind of brought that... Like you're about to do something super important, which oh, obviously he, he was. Yeah, no, that's what I got through too. But something is happening now, and then you kind of get the call and response. I want to see it, and nothing will be the same. Never going to be the same. That kind of builds throughout the track, which I, I think is, uh, you know, um, kind of gets to the heart of when you're really thinking of surrendering your life to Christ. Yeah. Uh, that's, like, you know, the, the, all these thoughts racing in your head, it's like, okay, do I really want to go all in right. with this? Well, it even says that I'm slipping away. I can't step in halfway. Ooh, the moment like is that. here and now. So I thought there's some good lyricism here. And, uh, you know, he just, yeah, gets gets to the, the heart of it. I thought I felt you moving close to me in the silence of a dream. And again, you know, um, I'm of the, the belief where, you know, God calls us to him, you know. Exactly, than, and then uh, somebody convincing us to go that direction. So I, I think he got to the heart of it there. And yet still kind of, again, it's interesting, these first three tracks, um, you can obviously read the spiritual component there. And yet also it, it sounds good if you were just listening. Exactly. <laughs> you yeah, know? If, you didn't, if you didn't dive into the lyrics. And, you know, I, I was going to, I will mention... 
We're going to go back to 1980 on the next few tracks. Mm -hmm. This was 1983, but remember, as as Scott was telling us, he was describing the event in 1979. So that's why it's it's that way um, chronologically. We're going now to just one way from Seeds of Change, a uh, solo record from 1980. A lead singer of this song is the aforementioned Jeff Pollard, lead singer of La Roque. All right, just one way. Mm. Bringing it, man. Maybe my favorite tune, actually, up to this point. Um, just... Uh, Musically and and lyrically here, I thought Carrie uh, killed it, man, um, with uh, the lyricism and uh, had a, had some great uh, guitar licks to boot, man. I agree totally. You know, he starts out. There's a winding road that leads to nowhere, and I've been down each empty lane, up against the wall. It's the same old story. See, I like that. Up against the wall, a little so tie-in. That's man. what I thought too. <laughs> I've been around the world, but I searched in vain. So he's famous. He's been everywhere. Mm. Had money. Now I see that I've been such a fool. I was living in the darkest night. At my feet, there was a there laid a precious jewel. Mm. I burned my bridges, and it felt so right. And then it went to that. There's just, just one way. way, man. So so catchy that chorus, man. Yeah, and I think that second verse in here too. I stood at the feet of a hundred wise men. So you think he's gonna go a different direction? But mm-hmm. I tried to live my life according to their way. But I was still in chains. And my eyes were blinded, mm. and it felt so good. But I was led astray all my life. I looked for something real. Place to place, I wandered restlessly. I just needed something I could feel, and when I found the truth, it set Ooh. me free. Which, you know, so many people who are famous in whatever level—I mm-hmm. know he wasn't the level of fame of a lot of rock people, but he still had a level of fame. Oh yeah, success. They figure out that you've searched for this thing all your life, and at the end of the day, this doesn't leave you satisfied. And that mm-hmm. feeling you get when that happens of like almost desperation, of like, well, then what is it? No, man. And I, I mean, this clearly uh, reminded me of, uh, you know, uh, Scripture and John. I am the way, the yes. truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's Jesus talking. Yeah, John 14, 6. That's where it comes through. Just one way, just one way. From the dark to the light, there's just one way home. And that that's the thing that immediately sprang to my mind in, in that regard, man. Man, and um, you know uh, this that heavy religious imagery breaking the chains of uh, you know sin, uh, opening the eyes. Uh, I, I just thought that uh, I thought that was great. And uh, you know, Carrie hammers that home in his lyricism. There's a sacrifice that will resolve the gate will open by no other key. You know, um, again pointing to, to Christ. Yeah, and, and Trey, as you all know, I ran a men's ministry for many years, and I called it the Way. Dude, off of that, that that's, that's so right. Yeah, look at that, man. It's all uh, it all connects here, and we're just gonna stay with this record and uh, go to Mask of the Great Deceiver, where um, interesting song. Yeah, I bet. Carrie uh, had a bit of a controversial pick, uh, choosing Black Sabbath frontman at the time, Ronnie James Dio, to sing lead. Um, Carrie kind of defended that, saying he wrote this song and one other on the album with Dio in mind and Ronnie killed it. A uh, song is an obvious look at Satan's attempts to influence us and the world around us. I like me some Ronnie. Ooh. Ronnie was fantastic, man. All right, Mask of the Great Deceiver. Uh, just starting off, I, I, I think that um, Ronnie's power and his voice, man, it uh, synced up so well to the uh, uh, the subject matter and um, you know the, kind of the power of uh, Carrie's lyrics. He's done a great job so far mashing up vocalists to fit uh, kind of the subject of the tunes. Yeah, I agree. That was fantastic. Dio was fantastic mm. on there. My favorite parts of the song. It's almost like a tale of two songs, right? Yeah. The intro was good. The outro is good. I get it. It's building the ambiance. Mm. In it, like when when Ronnie came in and really got after it, mm-hmm. then the guitar would come in. You're strong, right. And yeah. the drumming would come in strong. Almost sounded like something Dio would do with Sabbath or on his own, yeah, yeah. right? And so those were my favorite parts. When we went back to that synth and keyboard, yeah, and yeah. it was kind of like a tale of two songs for me. That's like, true. I don't really need that here. <laughs> I, and the intro and outro, I get it. But the lyrics, this is the first time. I mean, the other songs were definitely theological to some aspect, but this is a theological mm-hmm. treatise. It is, it is absolutely just rooted in and telling the story of the great deceiver of Satan. And that's right. And I thought man. he just did a fantastic job with the writing on this. Well, you know, and he built up to that, just that uh, deception that, yes. uh, you know, Satan uses. Don't you know the world is his dominion? Can't you see you're bound in his change? The time is short, so take your strength and what remains. We ain't going to be here, you know, all the time. No. And, you know, uh, and he kind of. Uh, Carrie, uh, you know, wrote the, the track in a way where you you kind of feel like, okay, you know, there's that, that power that Satan has, and yet, you know, he also knows that there's a, a greater power that can help you uh, break exactly. these chains. Yeah, but I like sense. that he did 
you know, he did acknowledge that because mm-hmm. I see a lot of pastors who kind of diminish the power mm-hmm. of Satan. The Bible tells you yourself, itself that he is, you know, mm-hmm. the prince of this world. Of this world, yeah. Yeah, he's the father of lies. And he just gets into all of that. He'll fill your ears and he'll dazzle your eyes. It'll all sound mm-hmm. good, but don't believe what he's saying because he's the father of lies. In your heart, don't you know that he'll betray you? In the end, he will drag you away to all the world is crying for the Ooh. judgment day. But while it's happening, while you're in sin, you're like, well, you know, this is this is fun. No, man. And uh, I, I just thought uh, getting to that that tug and pull that there is with with sin and and just the lies. Um, I, I thought that was just very well done by by Carrie here. Yeah, man. and I think the instrumental change up in the middle. This was good for this part, mm-hmm. though. The truth is walked among us, talking about Jesus and the words that he spoke mm-hmm. will remain. There's a heartbreaking blindness upon. On us. All our efforts to be free are in vain. <laughs> that the God, gift of love were lost mm. without the love, the love of Christ. So I thought that was a good place oh, to shift yeah. up the musical tempo. But yeah, he, it's it's a fantastic song. Really strong list so far, Dad. We're halfway through it, and now we're going to go to the only track that wasn't on Spotify for some way, uh, reason. Uh, so we pulled the YouTube uh, audio up. We got Lead Me to Reason from Art of the State. This is by AD uh, again in 1985. Yeah, and Kerry leans into his Christianity with this confession regarding the reality of his own inherent inclination to self-deception, and dare I say it, sinfulness, but mm. not without hope. I think all of us who are believers uh, will probably resonate with this <laughs> yeah. song if that's the subject matter. But man, this had some of my favorite lines uh, from this list. Musically, my least favorite by far up to this point. Really? Just that, that mid-80s, yeah. uh, I don't know, it's just uh, not not a type of sound. With the, We had like the chimes in there, they kind of annoyed oh, me. Oh, yeah. Only if you grew up with this kind of music <laughs> track, get it, you wouldn't listen back. I mean, I actually didn't mind it because it was 1986, baby. I was 14 years old. They even said during the the chorus parts, he kind of sounded like Peter Cetera, <laughs> uh, former lead singer of Chicago, and then success on his own. He sounded just like that there. But I agree with you. I like the, uh, I didn't mind the musical component of it. I did like the lyrics of it. You know, just basically the the overall thing is, look, I, I wished I wouldn't sin, but mm-hmm. I continue to be be pushed back into that sin, and I just yeah. I can't get away from it. It deeply frustrates me. Which you know, the Apostle Paul talks about in mm-hmm. Romans seven at length, and also I used to say this all the time, Trey, when I was teaching. Bible study classes of just, you know, I'm surprised that I'm not farther along at this <laughs> yeah. point than I thought I would be That's because true. that sin is always pulling. You never get away from that pull mm. of it. So I thought he did a great job of kind of putting that up in a nice 1986 synth-laden song, baby. <laughs> well, I, uh, I'll just highlight a couple of my favorite lines. Fighting the feeling and failing to win, where do I begin? Over and over I silently scream, this must be yeah. a dream. Points to what Fantastic, you just said, man. Dad. And then maybe my favorite line up to this point, bury the old man and raise up the new when his time is due. Um, you know, killing that old man, raising up that, that yep. new life uh, that we have through through the spirit, man. So, um, yeah, uh, I enjoyed the lyricism there. And now we're going to uh, go to our, our next track, track number seven on this list. Pull it back up on Spotify here. We have no standing um, from the Reconstructions record from AD in 1986. Carrie has been quoted as saying this song is his Christian response to Dust and mm. the Wind, the, obviously one of the most famous Kansas tunes, which was a dreary look at human existence while bearing musical similarities to Dust and the Wind. This track is a hope-filled affirmation that the child of God is never standing still, always moving forward toward being remade into the image of Jesus. And we certainly have much more to look forward to than disintegrating into the breeze like the poor unfortunate souls at the end of Avengers Infinity War. Ain't that the truth? That is exactly right. right. No standing, bringing it in. Uh, first time we've had an acoustic, like yes. prominent, uh, you know, instrumental there. So definitely had a different feel than uh, the rest of uh, the list up to this point. A bit of a... Uh, yeah, just kind of a, a serene, I guess, nature to it to as it. well. I could picture myself just sitting under like a big tree, just uh, kind of thinking of the future here. Yeah, and I think that's obviously, you know, it has, as uh, as Scott mentioned, it does really have some similarities to Dust in the Wind. Mm-hmm. And so I guess that's why he stripped it back. But yeah, he's just telling the story of basically as a, as a believer, there's no standing still. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and I, I used to say that all the time too. You know, you, mm-hmm. you can't. You're either moving towards Christ or you're moving mm-hmm. away from him as a believer. There's no there's no standing still. There's no status quo. And he's just he's talking about that as the wind is blowing, spirit in us moving. For the work that once began will reach an end, and the end is really only the beginning mm. as we ascend. So I, that was my favorite uh, oh, yeah, lines man. in the song. That, that was uh, that was actually what I was going to highlight too, man. I, I yes. thought that really uh, really spoke to me. Uh, had, had that power behind it. And Definitely. I, I, I dug that too, man. And 
uh, we got three three songs left, y'all. We're gonna now uh, fast forward to 2004 uh, with the track "Occasion of Your Honest Dreaming" from the record uh, "Before it Became After" from Proto Ka. Um, Live uh, Livgren takes a look backward to where he has been with a plea to those who are now where he once was. All right, "Occasion of Your Honest Dreaming." I kind of mentioned it uh, in the reaction, Dad, but uh, especially instrumentally, man, this uh, harken back to the that '70s sound. Yeah, it had some prog rockish stuff uh-huh. to it for sure. They're throwing all kinds of stuff in there. Um, probably my least favorite musically mm-hmm. so far. Um, but, you know, good. It's really about the lyricism on a lot of these. You know, great lyricism is, uh, as always. No, man, I, I think just uh, kind of kind of what Scott was uh, talking about at the beginning, yeah. man. Uh, you know, uh, uh, you, you can play your hand or you decide to fold and you move to a different town just to get a change of pace. You're on the move and you dream again. You're going to wake, but you don't know when. You wish it all would just go away. Right. Just I, I think again, uh, as a lot of these uh, lyrics have, um, just that that sense of longing, of searching, of a uh, not For sure, man, not wanting to be in uh, the position that you're in, and kind of looking to a uh, uh, another hope and um, something to to maybe actually work this time. And, yeah, um, exactly. You, you know, I, I think Carrie kind of gets to the heart of that, and um, we got two songs left, y'all. We're going now to all creation sings right here and uh scott noted on this sort of a rock hymn the lyrics of which are self-interpreting and we're gonna take it back to 1985 uh with uh that uh art of the state record hitting our fade out with all creation sings what you think of this one dad i liked it the anthemic <laughs> chorus was was my favorite when it kind of just roamed in there all creation sings yeah that gospel choir yeah, man man that, that was tight man all creation sings to the glory of your name so you just calling out, you know, for the return of Christ and delving out kind of biblically mm-hmm. as it appears and as it progresses. Yeah, anticipating the grand return, crying out for the page to turn. I want to know as I am known and see you as you are. Every knee will bow and all will proclaim. Um, and yeah, man, I and then that leads right into that awesome chorus. Yes. That definitely had the most, uh, you know, uh, gospel... Um, I, I think music sound to it as yeah. well. We had the the synth uh, at the end, which I maybe could have done without. Could have either. Uh, we got to remember, man. We dialed it back, dude. man. We got we got to have these things going on, man. Um, but yeah, man. Just a uh, you know maybe the most overt uh, you know spiritual song, of course. On it's this up there. List. Yeah, for it, sure. It is well, man. So I really enjoyed that one, and um, you know it's it's always always good to to look ahead to the future, man. And uh, and that's kind of what our our list is going to end out with with the uh, at morning's gate uh, from the 2006 record by Protoca, uh, the weight of glory. Yeah, uh, Scott says I've noticed over the years my favorite artists excel when they write about the believer's future in eternity. Mm-hmm. Livgren is no different. I, I've already made it known that this song will be played at my memorial hey. service <laughs> when the time comes, of course. So. I read these notes, you know, before we did this, mm-hmm. and uh, I was very uh, anticipatory to hear this mm-hmm. song for that reason. You want to play it at your funeral? It's got to have some power, man. <laughs> last tune and maybe the best for last. At mm-hmm. Morning's Gate, bringing it, man. And uh, wow, this is it had such an air of seriousness about it that yet also hope and um, just uh, peace. And I, I just really love this one. I did too, and you know. This was the one where the instrumentation was totally dialed back because it's oh, yeah. all about what is being said. It was just so well done. And, you know, though a rich man's heir or a pauper's son, underneath the cross we shall all be one. When the days shall wane and the season's growing late, we'll stand at morning's gate. So, yeah, I, this thing is just great. And I, I like the fact we had, I think, you know, there's some trumpets coming in in the middle. Uh, again, kind of reminding you of the, the biblical call, you know. With yeah, no, that's what sounds. I felt. Almost this heavenly type. It was after the second verse before we get to that. Just there's only three verses. Mm-hmm. That third verse says it all. Yeah, man. Through a veil of tears, we have run the course, thirsting for the well of the purest source, not the bitter taste of the ground in which we're laid. For all have been remade. I, I, I think just bringing in all the the themes kind of of this list to a head. I, I swear to you, I was going to say that like, mm-hmm. this is the best way to end this list. It just worked out absolutely perfectly. And I, I can see why Scott would uh, want that played. I can too, man. And uh, yeah, I, just a powerful, powerful tune. And uh, that transitions us nicely now to our favorite tracks. I got to have at Morning's Gate. I'm, I I'm, there. I'm there. I'm going to go Miracles Out of Nowhere. I'm going to go Just One Way. And um. I, I guess I'll go Mask of the Great Deceiver as well. I thought the seeds of change, um, 
you know, the, the, that was a, a big, big hit for me. Yeah, I'm going to go with it. Morning's Gate, um, just one way. And my favorite, well, my favorite was, I guess, at Morning's Gate, but the Mask of the Great Deceiver yeah, man, is, that was tight. Uh, is fantastic <laughs> as well, man. Well, uh, that, I guess, is going to kind of wrap up stuff for today. I want to shout out Scott again for yes, bringing this to man. us just as we're kind of wrapping up here, man. I, I think that... Uh, you know, it's awesome when a, a Christian can can bring forth their talents and skills, and uh, you know, impact believers and non-believers, and non-believers alike. As well. And uh, you know, just kind of share that that hope and enjoy. And uh, you know, also there was a lot of lyricism that dealt with kind of the struggles that happen in the in the Christian. Exactly. Involved, yeah, it wasn't all sugar coated. And that's that's the way it needs to be presented, man. That's perfect. So uh, I, I I dug this one. Let us know your favorites from this list and any other uh, Carrie uh, Livgren songs that uh, you are digging. And uh, be sure to give Scott some love in the Definitely. comments for bringing this to our attention man enjoyed it as always dad appreciate yeah, it yeah man it's a lot of fun and until next time y'all thanks for watching happy listening and we will see